Welcome everybody to Very Important Geeks, and today we're going to be going over the Keychron Q1. I'll be doing a small build and showing off my little custom touches on this keyboard. I've got my logo in the badge up there, just some black on white keycaps from Canon Keys with peach accents. And why I think for the money, this is a fantastic board with a few flaws that fortunately can be remedied. But before we get started, if you can say stem wobble and still keep a serious face, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more nonsense. So let's take a look at what's in the box. In the box you'll get the manual, always handy, a nicely braided color coordinated USB-C cable, and it's an aviator style cable as well. Not bad. Extra screws and gaskets. If we dig a little deeper we get the quick start guide, nice reference to have, and a bunch of tools like mini screwdriver, allen key, switch puller, and keycap puller. And finally, we have the board itself, the Mighty Q1. Now, I opted for the bare bones version, coming in a nice blue color, and you can see that it comes fully assembled. There is some foam between the plate and PCB, and behind the PCB as well. It's got these nice brass screws as a little accent, Mac and Windows control here, and the USB-C. Finish is really nice, don't notice any defects, no blemishes, no scratches. And for keycaps, I got a simple black on white keycap set from Canon Keys. And then I got some peach accents just because I thought that would look good. And for switches, I got these Texi Ice Candy Linear switches. I thought the all see-through transparent housing would look kind of cool. And can't forget the desk key switch films. And because I had the option, of course I had to get a custom badge. I mean, come on! Now I wanted to take it apart to see how it came stock. The PCB was already mounted to the top plate, so that piece all comes out together. And the PCB is also connected to a daughter board for the USB-C. Now since the pre-production model, they've added in this extra piece of foam here, but you can see that the foam is still really, really thin. But you get this one piece of foam, and there's still that original thin piece of foam on the bottom of the case, but that seems to be glued on with some adhesive there. Now in the bag of extra parts you get extra rubber feet, extra screws, uh, an extra cable for the daughter board. But perhaps most importantly these extra foam gasket strips. Once you pull the plate out with the PCB, you'll notice that only some of the gaskets have the foam strips on them, like this one here does, but this one in the middle does not. And I think that's just to preserve some flexibility in, in the PCB and the plate. But now that you have those extra foam strips, if you want to go ahead and put them on, feel free to do so. Then I went ahead and lubed some switches so I could test out the stabilizers. They were pre-lubed and were okay, but this board is pingy. And one of the biggest problems with the case design is that there's this long piece of thin metal that's just running across the top under the F-Row, and that's sort of acting like a tuning fork or a guitar string. So if we dampen it a little bit... We can reduce the vibrations and pinging. So now this is what it sounds like stock, with no modifications. To add a little more silencing and muting to the back of the PCB, a lot of people normally use painter's tape, but I have a lot of this stuff left over, and it's called Coban. It's just stretchy and a little fluffier than painter's tape, so I decided to give it a try. It's very good at sticking to itself, but not actually being sticky, so you don't have any like residue on the back of your PCB or anything like that. And since it's fluffier and a little thicker than painter's tape, I'm hoping it'll absorb some sounds a lot more. 
I also added some foam supports to that little piece of metal just under the F row, as well as adding little pieces of tape to the edges and corners where the top and bottom of the case meet. And here's a comparison of the final product versus stock. And I think we did a lot to combat the sound of the hollowness and the pinginess with the coban, the foam, the tape along the edges. If I had to do it all over again, I probably would get different switches. I'm not that big a fan of the Texi ice candies. While they look really good and they sound pretty good, the stem wobble is just insane on them. I think I would replace them with like a Zaku switch or something. The Zakus are probably one of my favorite linear switches. Very poppy, very fast, very stable, not a lot of wobble at all with those switches. And that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the Keychron Q1 in the comments. And stay tuned folks, as we close out the year, there will always be more hot swap and build videos. And I'm thinking about adding some other reviews of some other peripheral computer techie sort of stuff. Why don't you let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. And until next time, geek out.